Hello everyone, welcome back to Naomi's Bookshelf. We are going to do my recommendations for the elements of Buzzwordathon. So in October, we are reading the elements being earth, air, fire, and water, and words related to those terms in October's first week. So I have picked 10 books that I think you should read. I had a lot of variety this time because the words are so varied, but I think these are some great ones and I think you will enjoy them too. So the first book I want to recommend is Dead Mountain by Donnie Itcher. This subtitle is The Untold True Story of the Datlova Pass Incident. This one is a really fascinating nonfiction about this group of people who went on Dead Mountain, which is a mountain I believe in Russia. And I actually got this recommendation from Books and Lala who started Buzzwordathon, so it's a great connection. But this book is fascinating because it's kind of like a cold case mystery, but at the same time, it's just nonfiction. So the book follows Donnie as he goes to this area and he's trying to research how and why these campers and slash hikers would have left their tent in the middle of this freezing night without any proper gear on and then frozen to death and all of these weird situations of how they actually died. It also follows much more of a, like a mystery slash whodunit kind of style while also following scientific slash logical evidence while being a nonfiction. So highly recommend. A very funny nonfiction one is Creatures of the Rock. This is A Veterinarian's Adventures in Newfoundland by Andrew Peacock. I laughed out loud during this one because this veterinarian essentially got his degree and then needed a job, but nowhere was hiring except for Newfoundland. So he, I think, was trained in small animals, but when he got there, it was like, guess what? You get everything from cats to cows. And his wife was a nurse, so she was able to get a job at the local hospital. And it just follows literally the crazy adventures of what animals he helped and the people he helped during his time on the rock. It was supposed to be like a three, ter three year term and it ended up being a lot longer. It is a hilarious book and full of these funny antidotes, but also just crazy stories about Eastern Canadian culture and highly recommend that one. The last one I do not have a physical copy of is Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin. I think this is a great one to read. It was a little slow in places. However, I thought it was worth it. The audiobook was not good for me. I did not like the audiobook at all but I thought that the pacing really picked up about halfway through and it was a very interesting middle grade to young adult fantasy world once I got into the plot and I thought that that might be an interesting one for classics readers, classic fantasy readers to pick up if you have not yet read that book. So on to the books I have physically. The first one is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. I'm going with it. The Nile is a water being, a water body, essentially a river. This one follows Poirot as he is going on a water cruise in Egypt. He comes across a couple who are very much in love and on their honeymoon. However, it seems like everyone else who is going on the cruise in some way is connected to the wife, Lynette. And everyone there is very fascinated with her or wants to talk to her or is very interested in her money. And she's very, very rich. And the interesting parts about this is the buildup. I love how deep this one is. It is very in-depth with character development and it makes the murder so much better. I think this one is ingenious and I highly recommend picking up this one, Agatha Christie, if you have never picked up one before. A classic middle grade would be The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I count garden as part of earth. There we go. Uh, this one follows Mary as she goes from India all the way to England after the death of her parents. And she is quite a curmudgeon. She obviously has gone through some personal trauma. She comes to her relative's home and she is struggling to find where she belongs and how she can fit in, but also just how like life is gonna go from now on. Um, she also discovers some new friends and she also discovers that gardening is something she's very interested in. I think that this is a really sweet book about outside and just so charming within terms of like 
spring feels. Even though it's October reading, I think that this one might be a good book to pick up. A book that might sound like a summer read but isn't, in my personal opinion, is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book definitely takes place a lot more in the fall and winter time, as this book follows August and January as they are writers who are going through writer's block as they're living on a beach and they are like in like Nantucket area. However, it is off season, so definitely not summer. Uh, and they are struggling to write novels. However, they challenge each other to write the other person's genre. So she is going to write literary fiction and he is going to write romance. I personally love literary fiction when it comes to the right mood I'm in. So I personally loved the literary fiction aspects of this book along with the romance aspects as I do enjoy romance. So this was a really great read for me and I highly recommend this one. A middle grade that I have loved for a very long time is Alone in an Untamed Land. This is the Phil DeRoy, de I hope I'm not butchering that, uh, Diary of Helen de Orang. I hope I'm not butchering that either. This one is by Ma Maxine Trottier. Yeah, Maxine Trottier. And this is about girls who came over from France to New France, which is now Quebec. Um, and they were came over to be brides for all of the settlers, but they had no women. So um, they came over, these young girls, not young girls in the sense of like being children, but being like teenagers. And so this girl came over when she was like 13 and, or 14, I think it was. And when she came over, she actually came over with her sister who passed away on the journey. So as she's coming over, she was asked to take her sister's place. And that is kind of what this book is about, her coming over and being alone in this land that is full of strangers and she is trying to navigate her way. I love this book and I loved how it showed this part of Canadian history. I also thought it was fascinating to learn about how these girls actually had to come to a completely new continent and uh, struggle with something that they had never thought of before. A Christian suspense mystery thriller maybe for you would be On the Cliffs of Foxglove Manor by Jamie Jo Wright. This one came out this year and I loved it. This one follows two women as they are at the Foxglove Manor, one of which is back in the Civil War and the other one is during current day timeline as it is a home for the elderly who just need a place to live as like a care home. And so Kaylee in this current timeline is moving in there with her brother who has autism and she is trying to discover what is going on. This was a place that she visited when she was younger, when it was kind of like a hotel. But shortly after that event, she was kidnapped for about 12 hours. And I also want to put on a note there that nothing um, trigger warning wise happened during that time. And she was trying to discover what actually happens like why she was kidnapped. And then another child is kidnapped. So she needs to figure out how to help the situation. In the past timeline, you have Adrea, who is trying to discover the gold that her father has demanded she find and recapture essentially for his own selfish means. And it is very fascinating. And I loved this. It did talk a lot about uh, suicide and how the life is so valuable. And I do wanna give a trigger warning for suicide and suicide attempt. However, it talks about the value of life and how value is so precious. And it is a very poignant theme of this book. One of my favorite romances of all time is Every Storm by Laurie Wick. This one is so beautiful and I love this one. I've been waiting to recommend it. So this one follows Laurie and Rig as they go through World War II in some ways. So Lori is coming back from Australia when her plane crashes on an island. And during that time, she has to survive. It is very harrowing for her. This is happening at the beginning. And Rig comes across the island where she is like trying to survive alone. And he saves her with his U-boat. So he manages to bring her back to the States and it kind of goes from there. I also love how her family has to deal with the trauma that they have lost her older sister, so their daughter, uh, but it is just so wonderful. And I love the historical elements. I love the romance. And this is just a perfect book for me. And I highly recommend checking out this book of Lori Wicks if you haven't. It's also one of her shorter ones, 
but every one of her books is so easy to fly through. My last recommendation is A Pearl in the Sand by Tessa Afshar. This one is a biblical fiction about the story of Rahab. And I think this one's fascinating because it actually follows Rahab from the time that she would have been brought to Jericho in not extreme terms. It doesn't go into in-depth graphic terms about why she would have been there as Rahab is thought to be a prostitute. However, this one also goes into how Rahab survived after Jericho was destroyed and how she would have lived with the Israelites after the fact. So I think this one's really fascinating because not only does it show pre-Jericho, but also shows Jericho and after. So it shows how Rahab would have been integrated into the Israelite society and how she would have been received potentially. This is obviously fictionalized, but I love this interpretation of it. Um, I think it's really ingenious and sand is a earth word or, you know, I think it's great. So I highly recommend this one. And if you haven't read Tessa Afshar and you like historical fiction and Christian fiction, you should check out Tessa Afshar's work. My own pick for this will be Airwaves by Sherry Lord. I have been wanting to reread this for a while, so I'm going to be rereading it now. I have been putting it off because I just haven't had a good time, and this is the time, so Airwaves. Um, this one is about a radio station and two people who meet at the radio station. I don't remember much more. It says Emily Erickson does not belong with a guy like Colin Michaels on the cover. So I remember that Emily is a Christian and she comes into the work at this radio station and Colin is quite a bad boy. <laughs> uh, but I remember that I really enjoyed this one and I want to reread it, like I said. So this will be my official pick for Buzzwordathon in October. So I have a stack here of seven books that I physically own, even though they're not the right way for you to see. Uh, but I have seven books here and three books that I can tell you about that I think you should maybe try if you are at all interested in them for Buzzwordathon in October. Please let me know down in the comments what you'll be reading in October for Buzzwordathon. And if you have any other recommendations for words that relate to the elements, like titles that relate to the elements, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. And if you are new here and you'd like to subscribe, please do. And if you enjoyed this video, you can always like it and leave me a fun comment below. I'll see you next time in another video. Bye for now.